when it comes to C functions we have seen the following uh, concepts uh, one is the declaration and the definition of a function by which I mean um, the declaration is what type is the function what are the input arguments what types are the input arguments and what is the result return type. So these form the declaration a definition is the logic of the function. So this is what is known as the declaration and the definition of the function and we do it only once. So a function is defined only once. Um, once we define a function we can of course call the function multiple times. Okay. So definition is done only once and calling can be done any number of times. Now we refer to a stack which is what is the central concept in executing a function. A stack is just a part of the memory that grows only in one direction. So that is what um, it is supposed to mean. Um, basically you can think of it as a stack of boxes or a stack of paper on your table or a stack of plates. Uh, so it grows in one direction. Okay. So the stack grows as uh, the main calls a particular function, the fu that function calls us dif different function and so on. And you can imagine the stack as growing upwards or growing downwards, uh, it does not matter. As functions get called, it either grow keeps growing upwards or keeps going downwards. We will usually represent it as keeping uh, growing downward. So let us look at this function that we were uh, talking about earlier. So n choose k is n factorial upon k factorial times n minus k factorial okay. and let us try to code this up. We know that uh, factorial is something that we will need over and over in this program. So let us say that I will write factorial as a function. Uh, so factorial takes an integer and returns an integer. So the declaration is int fact int r, r is the input argument and the return type is int. Now inside that we will write the uh, code for factorial. All variables declared inside the factorial are local, are private to the factorial function. They cannot be seen outside. So the input argument as well as any variables declared inside factorial are private or local to the factorial function. So I have i and this encodes the logic of factorial that, that we have seen uh, earlier. So you start with the product equal to 1 and keep on multiplying the numbers till you reach r factorial. So once you reach r uh, you return the r factorial. So this logic is something that we have seen before. Now we will see how do we put this together in order to produce the function. So what we need to do is we will just encode up the solution that we have. So it is factorial n divided by factorial k divided by factorial n minus k. So here I have encoded just the uh, logic. So uh, even though division is involved I know that uh, when I do n c k the result is always going to be an integer. So I can declare it as int r e s. So this part is known as the definition of the factorial function. Okay. So this part is what is known as uh, definition okay. and each of these are what are known as calls. Now let us try to see what happens when we execute this program. Okay. So regardless of how many functions have been defined, whenever you start executing a program it always executes the first line of main. So let us uh, try to add some temporary variables because we uh, call this function three times in this main. Let us try to separate them out into three separate calls just for the sake of clarity. So I will add a slightly um, um, larger code. This is not 
a proper C code. I, let's say that I have three extra variables which I've declared up uh, int t1, t2, and t3. Now t1 will be factorial of n, t2 will be factorial of k, and t3 will be factorial of n minus k. I've separated these out so that I can clearly explain what happens when the code executes. Let's say that uh, I want to calculate 4c2. Okay. Now, first, when the program starts executing, uh, you start with the main uh, on the first line of uh, the uh, with the code on the first line of the main. So you scan of n and k. So n is 4 and uh, k is 2. Now you uh, do t1 equal to factorial of n. So, when t1 equal to factorial of n is called, what you do is you set up the uh, return value and return address. Okay, so, return value is not yet decided, return address is 5, because uh, you have to go back to line 5 of the code. So, that is why the return value is 5. Also, what do you need to do? You need to copy the uh, parameter value, which is 4. So, this is the actual parameter 4 and you have to copy it to uh, the input argument r. Okay. So, r is the input argument, r should be uh, assigned to the value n here, n is 4. Okay. So, that is known as uh, passing the argument. Now, once that is done, the code can be seen as jumping to factorial. Okay. So, uh, as soon as the function is called, you actually pass uh, the execution to the factorial function. Now, inside the factorial function, you have two in, uh, local variables, i and a n s, which is answer. Okay. And we start executing the factorial function. So, let us see uh, what happens when we execute the factorial function. So, so far we have passed the arguments and so on. Okay. Now, uh, I have just hidden the part of the stack that was used for main and let us focus just on the factorial function. This uh, computes the factorial function that we are familiar with, there is nothing new here. So, uh, it has a variable i which keeps track of how many times it has the loop has executed and r is notice 4. So, you compute the factorial of 4. Okay. Finally, when uh, r equal to 4, answer equal to 24. Now, this 24 value, we say return uh, the answer value. Okay. So, answer value is 24. So, this will be copied to the return value uh, location. So, the return value will get the value 24 and now jump back to return address. So, return address is line 5. Okay. So, we will jump back to line 5 and there we will say that t1 equal to 24. Okay. Only the return value is copied back to the main program. Okay. All other things are irrelevant. Okay. So, the correct way to imagine what happens when a function has returned is that the stack that was allocated to main uh, to the execution of fact is completely erased. Okay. So, once you go back to main, as soon as the uh, function returns back to the main, you should imagine that the entire stack is deleted. Um, and only the memory that was originally allocated to main remains. Okay. So, the correct way to think about a function executing, you can imagine that uh, you are main and you have a friend who can calculate factorial for you. Now, uh, you can ask your friend to calculate factorial for you and things are done in a very hygienic manner. So, what you do is you uh, write on a piece of paper. Uh, the number 4 okay, and give it to your friend. Now, your friend is in another room. Uh, so, he has at his disposal some blackboard. Uh, so, he looks at the number 4 
and using the private local variables that he has which is i and uh, result or answer he calculates the factorial of these numbers once he does that he copies the result back onto a piece of paper so 4 factorial is 24 okay and brings it back to you before he does that he raises his blackboard and he will bring back the number 24 on a piece of paper now you can imagine that the space that your friend used to compute 24 has now been wiped clean and uh, all that remains is the value 24 which you can copy back into onto your notebook okay so this allegory tells you exactly what happens in the case of a function execution you write down what uh, you want the factorial of on a piece of paper pass it to your friend he will go to a separate room and he will calculate whatever he wants once he does that he will clean his uh, blackboard write down the result on a piece of paper and bring that paper back to you okay so as far as you are concerned you do, you are least bothered with how he is computing the uh, factorial function all you want is the result and this is the basic way to think about functions you should be able to reason out a bigger program by saying what does a smaller program what does a smaller function do regardless of how that function does it okay okay now let's get on with uh, the remaining execution we have just computed factorial of 4 okay now we need to calculate factorial of 2 and factorial of 4 minus 2 okay so we uh, go to the next line the next line also involves a call to factorial of k so uh, we do the same things again we save the return address now the return address is 6 uh, because we are executing line 6 then we create a box for the return value and pass the parameters and finally jump to the called function okay so we do all that we have some memory for main uh, but we allocate a new stack uh, new space in the stack for executing factorial at this point return address is 6 because it is a second factorial that is being called r is 2 because k is 2 and you execute the factorial function okay so you again go to the factorial function and uh, calculate 2 factorial 2 factorial is 2 so that will be transferred back to the return value and now you can imagine that you will get back to the address 6 okay, where t2 will have the value 2 so once you do that again the thing to imagine is that this slate is wiped clean and all the memory that you allocated to the stack is now free so all once you are back in main all you have is the memory for main okay now there is a third call to factorial right factorial of n minus k and it is done in exactly the same manner okay so without uh, much elaboration so it will create uh, n minus k is 4 minus 2 which is also 2 and the return address is uh, 7 okay here is an n and once you do that it will execute the factorial code again and calculate the factorial of 2 which is again 2 and return to line 7 so 2 will be copied as the return value and once the execution finishes you return to line 7 of the main program okay at this point uh, you say that t3 equal to 2 and you can imagine that the stack allocated to uh, factorial is now erased right so at this point main has t1 equal to 24 t2 equal to 2 and t3 equal to 2 you have all the information that you need in order to calculate your result okay so you calculate 24 divided by 2 divided by 2 and the answer is 6 which is 4 choose 2 so this illustrates how do you uh, write a function 
how do you d define a function and how do you call it and what actually happens when you execute a uh, function. So the execution of a function can be visualized as a stack. A stack is a part of memory that is allocated as private to a new function that is being called. Once that function finishes execution, the stack is erased and you go back to the previous function and you go back to the calling function. 